Namaskar and welcome to Daily Global Insights, episode 301. We have some important announcements to make at the end of our program, so please do watch it till the end. And we also request you to like this program so it can reach its maximum potential. Please join me in welcoming Sridhar Chityalaji as our co-host for this program. Sridhar Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel, sir. Namaskar, good morning to everybody and uh, good day to those in other parts of the world. Uh, you know, we're excited to be here. Uh, today is the episode number 301. Uh, we celebrated the milestone of episode 300 yesterday. Thank you so much for all your support and we look forward to your continued support. And as Mr. G pointed out, we'll share some of our thoughts at the end of the program. Thank you very much, Sridhar Ji. And uh, Indian Air Force, the IAF, is deploying the first squadron of S-400 air defense missile systems in the Punjab sector to ensure sufficient protection against aerial threats from Pakistan and China. Batteries of the first squadron is a capable deterrent. Sita Ji, this is something that was much needed for India because Pakistan or, or perhaps China is trial ballooning a lot of these drones across the border to try and see if they can cause some mischief. Uh, do you think the S-400 can take down the drones or drones are too low for them? Well, I think the S-400 systems are capable. They're capable deterrents. Uh, I think Indian Armed Forces and Indian Air Force, uh, you know, is extremely capable uh, by way of judging and assessing uh, the, 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 the what you call as the deterrence mechanisms uh, that they want to be, they want to put in place. The fact that they have taken delivery and immediately installed it uh, is a very positive sign. While right up in the uh, uh, the northern sector, uh, they got the full battery of uh, full squadron of the Rafael 35s. Uh, sorry, the Rafael uh, uh, airplanes in conjunction with Brahmos missiles in three different formats are uh, deployed. So I think India is doing extremely well. Uh, it seems to be getting support from uh, you know the global what you call as the world order. Uh, recognizing China is the big gorilla in the room. And cash support to COVID hit economy with fiscal consolidation in the is the focus in the fiscal year 22 to 23 budget. The budget has a projected deficit of 6.8% for fiscal year 21 to 22. And green shoots are seen. Inflation should ease by mid 2022, says the president of FICCI. Coming from a neutral body or a, a corporate body, that augurs well, sir. I think India is doing, India has done well, notwithstanding the fact uh, the left liberal adversarial comments. Uh, they, you know, we have been advocating that they should not be afraid uh, to increase the fiscal stimulus and for the time being, given a pandemic, uh, not worry about the deficit, which is exactly what United States did. United States injected almost close to, uh, you know, 10 to 12 percent of the GDP uh, as one single shot. And you, we saw that the impact that it had uh, on the turning the situation in the middle of a COVID. I think the same thing we are witnessing in India. So the positive news is this uh, that uh, India will finish, uh, you know, either 10 percent or greater than 10 percent uh, GDP in FY 21-22, uh, recovering from the COVID. And then, of course, the FY22-23, what they're saying is that the, there will be fiscal consolidation, uh, monetization, remonetization of some of the assets that will be injected. And again, uh, India will be afraid to, uh, to put the money in. The industry is responding by saying they are seeing green shoots. They are seeing the inflation levels uh, kind of come down, and uh, which again is an effective uh, endorsement from the independent body. Because at the end of the day, they are the people who put capital to work in the industry. A smartphone manufacturing plant operated by Foxconn, a Taiwanese contract electronics manufacturer, near Chennai in Tamil Nadu will remain shut this week following incidents of worker unrest. Reuters is reporting this story. Sridharji, do we have an update on this? This update on this is basically... Uh, there's some kind of food poisoning that occurred, uh, which caused these people to uh, to riot, um, and uh, which resulted in the shutdown. This is a contract manufacturing company that provides much needed supplies to, 
to Foxconn, which in turn provides the supply line to Apple. Uh, you know, interesting that, uh, you know, this story is being reported by Reuters, uh, you know, and, and the other important thing is, who is Foxconn? Foxconn has a common thread between with China because Foxconn is based in Taiwan. So do we smell some kind of a rat? I certainly smell some kind of a rat in this, uh, you know, food poisoning, therefore riots and shutdown of the factory. Uh, I, I, I don't remember that Vedanta Group factory in Tutikorin uh, that was shut down, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, all kinds of arson and riots. And then who was the beneficiary out of that? China. China, right. Right. So and, uh, you, you know the you know the terrain very well. Uh, you can you can take it from here and further expand on this. Well put, G. And and this is a bunch of useless, incompetent, incompetent books who will not work, who cannot work, but they will want salary, and then for that they will go and obstruct. This is the group that does all these things. Unfortunately, uh, they will. Maybe they should be sent to work in China. Maybe that will make them to work first. So, but that that remains a hope. Um, let's move on. Biden pledges better access to testing and deploys military to fight O in his address to the nation on Tuesday. So the Omicron or Omicron. Um, they want the military now to help them out. Uh, Sridharji, uh, I mean, US has been pretty smoothly putting all their vaccines. Why the need for military, sir? Oh, it is because it is a G Omicron, sir. So, which is the reason why uh, they not only want to have enhanced facilities, but clearly they're having some difficulties on the logistics and the distribution. It's probably also to some extent uh, you know, people rioting or people agitating uh, against these vaccine mandates. Uh, so both in conjunction with managing the distribution and supplies, as well as helping uh, the frontline, you know, basically military is doing what the frontline workers ought to do as they try to scale up and increase the vaccines. Remember, the percentages that we talked about is for vaccine one and vaccine two. Still, we have an accelerated capability that is required to put the boosters. And Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, who, who is fighting communism, moves to decouple state pension funds from Chinese communists. See, the, the day California does this, CalPERS, that will be the end of all this, uh, uh, you know, uh, investment in China. It will be a flood when that happens. But Florida is not a small uh, cookie either. So I think this is very interesting, sir. Well, I think uh, uh, Ron DeSantis, in my view, has emerged as a clear runaway winner. Uh, you know, Abbott, Greg Abbott of Texas uh, is somewhere there, but Ron DeSantis is the one. Uh, he's matching his rhetoric with actions where not just on one front, but on several fronts. Uh, he's the one who stood up on the mandates and you saw what has happened to Florida, it had an aberration, it has come down, but he's really making a very decisive move in terms of the pension funds uh, and allocation of capital. And that should send a very clear signal, uh, at least he is uh, clear, a clear signal to the Chinese. How they respond to that is going to be very interesting. And Republican Congressman Scott Perry refuses interview with the Jan 6 Commission, claiming it is illegitimate. Michael Flynn sues the Jan 6 committee and Pelosi over subpoenas. Sridharji, before we kicked off DGI, Michael Flynn had been already uh, indicted, isn't it? So where do things stand now? And also maybe you can touch upon a little bit about the overall allegation that Russia interfered with the 2016 elections. Well, I think that the first and foremost, I'll start with the last point. Russia interfered yes. with 2016 elections. The progressive truth that is coming out, uh, no, progressive is with, with, you know, no double quotes, the progressive as a simple word. That is the evolving truth is that this was a complete balloony. Uh, there's no substance behind it. It was all concocted by a whole bunch of people uh, whose names uh, people can read by Googling rather than myself, uh, concocted and it is not sticking. That is why even Robert Miller's, uh, what you call investigations, uh, did not reveal any truth. Now, Durham is conducting the investigations. And that's also proving that this was all kind of concocted. 
uh, and several conflict uh, conflict of interest issues around the people uh, you know who are the instigators so therefore that just is going out of the window this whole january 6th commission which is the second the first part of the question was initiated somehow to uh, to make a point that it was a pre-planned insurrection orchestrated by President Trump and a whole bunch of people. So they have been randomly calling with President Trump as the target. And I think this is also going to unravel. We reported in Daily Global Insights Adam Schiff's message, how he had tutored the message that was acknowledged by the commission. But nothing, they will do nothing, but they will call all these people. I think this is going to unravel as the 2022 year dawns to say that this whole thing is a political, politically motivated shimazo uh, and nothing more, nothing else. If you want to play back, play back the video and you will see that when you see those videos and people, you know, people comment, have remarked as to how the police force allowed some of these rioters to get in. And in some instances, they were even being directed uh, into the chambers. So I think the truth will come out. And I think these fellows are taking a very bold and brave stance. Uh, be it uh, Scott Perry or Michael Flynn. And Senate Democrats call for a crisis meeting over Build Back Better program collapse. And Manchin, the person who is standing against that, is silent. And is he quitting the Democratic Party? The speculation is right. Perhaps Sridharji knows a little bit more than what we do. Sridharji, your thoughts? Any updates on this, sir? Well, I think that the uh, there is clearly... Um, you know, pressure building, um, and he is very frustrated with many of the policies. Because many of the policies directly has a bearing and Virginia and the people that he represents. So the policies that uh, that resonate with his people, I think, seems to be much more Republican aligned rather than Democrats. So he says, "Look, I'm here to represent the people." Okay, the policies that I'm talking about seems to resonate with. Uh, the Republican Party, which is leading the efforts, and I work with him anyway. So there is very, there are very strong indications. He's not the only one. There's at least a couple of others, uh, both in the Senate as well as few in the House, which are contemplating, uh, you know, moving to the Republican Party in alignment with the policies, typically fighting the progressive caucus within the Democratic Party. Sridharji, we all along we were thinking about how the Republicans will get a majority in the House as well as in the Senate by November 2022. So if your prediction comes true, it might happen sooner, sir. First quarter 2022. Well, um, you know, in, as they say in Hindi, uh, ghee and sugar in your mouth if that happens, because this, this administration is clearly not capable of running the country. I think uh, many people, I mean, you have to also look at Brian Williams' final speech, to, you know, DGI, you can say, oh, we guys are biased and all that. But listen to some independent people. He said that he feels like the United States, United States is a house that is being burnt from and, and uh, burnt and with all of us inside of it. Basically, it means that the whole country is going up in smoke. Beijing paid millions to DC, uh, that is Washington DC based radio station WCRW that covers Maryland, Virginia and Washington to make Chinese propaganda uh, be spread to US households. Sridharji, this is a very pivotal thing. I mean, for the longest time, everybody in America has complained that the uh, lobbies are almost always constantly, you know, giving donations and then asking the congressmen and senators uh, to do their bidding. In fact, one of the taglines that Trump promised was to drain the swamp. So uh, this was another method, I guess, to keep propagandizing and things like that. Uh, is this the only station? Because now we have so many syndicates where uh, actually there, there are radio conglomerates now. Each, each group has 30, 40, 50 stations. More to come. This is just based on the investigations. Uh, CGTN, which is a Chinese overseas uh, uh, network, uh, seems to have paid uh, X million dollars, uh, whether it is 1.5 or $2 million as a sponsorship uh, to see that this particular campaign is broadcast through uh, the 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 uh, this particular network, uh, which is Washington DC based. Uh, as you point out, more because we can't speculate. We need to have some kind of investigation 
and the discovery process uh, to reveal the truth. So this is an outcome from one of those uh, investigations. And Vladimir Putin tells US and its allies are to blame for the crisis in Europe with a warlike rhetoric and keeps the door open for talks. Sir, if this is not saber rattling, I don't know what is. Well, I think we have said this uh, again, at least no less than two to three times um, that Vladimir Putin is bargaining. He wants to have a seat at the table, which is what President Trump gave him. He just ignored him, and uh, but at the same time put sufficient deterrence, and that is why there was uh, harmony. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the focus was really on China. Here they began to the the, the U.S. and its allies began to saber rattle Russia for whatever reasons. And that's not rubbing very well uh, with, with, with Mr. Putin. Mr. Putin is saying, I'm here to negotiate. If you don't want to negotiate, well, then I'll have my way. While he does that, he's also, we covered this in DGI, he's trying to do something with, uh, with the Chinese as well. So he's keeping all his options open. And he's also rattling with Iran. We again covered this in DGI. So therefore, he's saying, come to the party if you want my help. And I'm here to help be it Afghanistan, be it Iran, be it uh, gas supplies to Europe, uh, be it any strategic partnership uh, that Europe and uh, we want to have. I won't invade Ukraine, but they're not going to wag their tails with me. That's his message. And for those of you who want to know about Putin-China relationship, do watch yesterday's Hangout with Elmer Yuan. A lot of revelations, very, very interesting data that was revealed. And, and you will find a much better understanding of how the brain of Vladimir Putin works. Significant surges in Omicron expected across Europe as the virus spreads, says WHO. Sridharji, we already predicted this in our uh, uh, episodes. I guess the only silver lining, if you can call that, is that the symptoms are mild and that you can recover. Uh, many of them can recover from their home itself. Um, any other uh, updates on this, Sridharji? Well, I think that right throughout 2021, we have been highlighting the COVID data. We have been highlighting the COVID trends and the rise in COVID trends. Right throughout 2021, we have highlighted that U.S. remains the dominating uh, country by virtue of active cases. We again reported that, uh, you know, mandates, no mandates. Some states uh, tilt up and down based on the immigration, illegal immigrants. We have also stated why California remains the most, most active and dominant state within the United States. The difficulty here, sir, is the lethality comes in when you have pre-existing health conditions. The problem and challenge that we face with any of these viruses uh, is the antidotes are still not fully compatible. It's only a deterrence mechanism, especially for those who have pre-existing pre health conditions like diabetic, respiratory disorders, uh, heart disease, you know, lung disease, you know, all these kinds of stuff. That's where the problem is. And um, hence, I think one has to, one who is uh, belongs to that category must take care. But as you rightly pointed out, for those who are normal, uh, these effects are quite mild. And the United Nations urges Belarus and Poland to address the refugees' dire conditions as the impasse looms between the two nations. Sridharji, again, this is a Russia-created problem. Maybe Russia should pay for sending these people back to where they came from. I don't know it's Russia. I wouldn't put Russia. I think that I would say that Belarus is playing a smart game. Obviously, they feel that the big brother Russia is, uh, you know, always there to support. Uh, you know, we need to look at what Turkey, Iran and Belarus have done, uh, you know, to needle uh, Europe. Because all this because Belarus president-elect uh, was not recognized due to the so-called or the due to the uh, faulty elections. Since then, he has again used every tool that is available. So these fellows just didn't you know, land in the Polish border or Lithuanian border. They were airlifted uh, by the uh, Belarus airline as well as the, uh, the Turkish airline into Belarus. And some of them have gone back, but a vast number of them are stuck in the, uh, in the border. 
So my uh, proposal to United Nations is, why not you use the same planes as a part of the UN refugee program to take them back to the nations where they came from, where the weather and the conditions are not so oppressive? Why can't they use the same planes? They came in planes. They did not come by, you know, walking or uh, by by uh, boats. Take them back through the same program to the respective countries. UN can pay for it. It's got plenty of money. And and the numbers are staggering. I think are, the numbers are in thousands. So this is going to be something. I think this kind of thing is going to happen more in other countries also. As I read the, the next few news items, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Japan to ask for a 14-day quarantine at facilities to, bro to block Omicron. Sinaji, this uh, is again a drastic step that Japan is taking to try and keep Omicron out of its shores. However, this, you know, it has to be seen if everything came from South Africa or this is just a mutation of an existing virus, sir. Uh, well, I, I, I think I, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I, I think we addressed, we discussed this. Uh, the, the only only flaw that uh, it can be assigned to South Africa is Dr. Hirsch made a statement that they have detected this specific virus based on the research right. that they did. But there's nothing that says that, you know, hordes of people went to South Africa and returned from South Africa. So therefore, this mutant uh, is uh, cascading or exploding as a result of it, as you rightly point out. Uh, you know, the problem in all of this is they just do not get to the bottom of it. And this, as you rightly say, could very well be uh, a mutation from one of the existing viruses rather than South, South Africa being the root cause of this. And South Korean ambassador meets with Japan's foreign minister, uh, or, or the number two in Japan's foreign ministry, I should say, in a potential sign of resumption of talks, Japan increases U.S. forces support to $9.2 billion over five years. The rapprochement is near. Yeah, so I think that the um, uh, Korea is very interesting because the disc, if you recall that the ambassador of uh, Japan in uh, Korea or the uh, Korean ambassador in Japan revved up the issue that resulted in a, in a stalemate, especially with regard to uh, this uh, slaves uh, or the enslavement of the women uh, and uh, the reparations for that. Uh, the discussion stalled, uh, but the fact that, uh, you know, now we have a new uh, prime minister, they want to resume the dialogue the trilateral talks between United States, Japan, and Korea also got stalled uh, because the Korea would not budge and Korea and Japan would not reconcile. The fact that the, uh, the, the, the ambassador has gone and met with people in the, of the finance ministry augurs very well. The second news, which is very, very important in Japan, is that they are increasing the budget cognizant that they need expanded U.S. forces and capabilities in its soil for potential deterrence against any incursion attempts by China. Uh, there was a very interesting interview uh, with uh, Mr. Suga that, we is, uh, that has been published, which says that Suga acknowledging readily when he had his first meeting with President Biden, we covered this in Daily Global Insights you know, a few months ago, probably April 2021. He said even before he could ask, Biden basically stood up and said, President Biden stood up and said, I am here to support you and Senkaku Island will be preserved and will be the sovereign part of the sovereign nation of Japan. So I think that the fact that there is still that camaraderie and Japan is the number one ally of United States uh, also augurs very well in a positive context, at least in the US-Japan relationship as part of the foreign policy, sir. And Israel to offer the fourth dose of vaccine for people over 60 in trying to contain the spread of COVID. Sitaji, this is uh, what uh, vaccine are uh, Israeli citizens using, sir? They're using uh, both. Uh, they got both Pfizer. They got Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, plus they have their own domestic version. The fact that they are contemplating a fourth vaccine, fourth dosage, especially for those above 60, is what we have been alluding to because some of these people may have uh, 
uh, you know, uh, pre-existing conditions. I think what's important to point out, if you go back in the first and second waves, Israel, war, Israel and Taiwan, where they marked nations as, though, as those which managed COVID very well. But the surges that is going on in Israel uh, is mind boggling. And you can see they are, uh, you know, taking progressive steps. And now let's take a look at markets. Markets rebounded strongly on Tuesday, shedding three days of losses amid rising COVID cases, with the Dow rising 1.6%, S&P 1.8%, and NASDAQ gaining 2.4%, regaining the lost ground. All this is good news, Sridharji, and uh, with expectations that post-COVID airlines entertainment will be also reopening is also good news for the industry as generally that will help the economy sir i think it's a positive sentiment um again we reported yesterday you do not react to gyrations you basically stay the course because sentiments run high volume of trading is limited number of people participating in trading is very limited so sometimes you see market movements but you just don't react you get you will get caught in the the crossfire uh, in one day, we're back to where we started. You know, the Dow is uh, back close to 36,000. Uh, S&P is close to 4,700 or 4,650. So look at these numbers as we have predicted before uh, that, you know, 2021 will finish strong um, and has finished uh, or is finishing pretty close to that mark because we are already two days, only two days left this week and probably three days left next week. Um, and you know, stay the course, finish the year, be happy, and plan for 2022. And with that, um, today's program comes to an end, but we have some important announcements to make. First off, from this point forward, we are going to have um, the program come only on Wednesdays at the same time. What we are noticing is that when we did these 300 episodes, we found that a lot of a lot of news items are spread over multiple days with not much of a movement. Uh, for example, just take the COVID. We've been talking about it. Most of the stuff that we talked about today was discussed in yesterday's as well as the day before's episode. So there is a certain amount of redundancy that we want to remove and we want to try once a week and see how things go. Thanks for all your support. Sridharji, if you would like to add to that, please go ahead, sir. Namaskar. Uh, thank you so much, Ji. I think, first of all, uh, thank you all for your support uh, in this journey, which has evolved over last one year plus, uh, resulting in 300 plus episodes. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, you know, we, we wholeheartedly thank you for uh, for your for your uh, candid support and feedback that we have received. We also are reaching out and seeking your support. Uh, the channel, uh, P Guru's channel. Uh, is based on sponsorship, is based on advertising revenue. Uh, so therefore, you can see that there are no advertised sponsors. Much of the advertising comes from by way of, uh, you know, indirect sponsorship as well as support by viewers like yourself. So I think, uh, you know, we would like to see your continued support and patronage in making sure that the channel is able to sustain, develop, and enhance and deliver better content. So I think that's the first message. The second message is, as Shiji pointed out, we're going to experiment and try uh, this once a week program around the global uh, insights. We probably may have something around the, more specifically around the US markets, but US markets is very much the dominating force which sets the context and which sets the trends. For example, inflation numbers that we touched on today, which is acknowledged by the FIXI, uh, is the same number that is say, similar kind of a trend being forecast by the U.S. industry as well for 2022. Remember, right now the inflation in the United States is around 6.2 percent, uh, you know, or 6.8 percent if you take a look at the November numbers. Uh, so I think that there is a lot of correlation. Uh, markets are interconnected. So we are, we're going to see uh, we, whether we can cover that. We also will do some work around the blockchain crypto ecosystem. I'm not talking about the cryptocurrencies. I'm just talking about crypto as a payment vehicle, as well as blockchains as the enabling uh, technologies and mechanisms. So we probably would do some work, work around that. But watch for your, watch for more announcements around this as we prepare and plan for 2022. Thank you, and thanks so much for all your support. And we'll see you next Wednesday.
नमस्कार नमस्कार एंड थैंक्स वंस अगेन सर